on the Ozarks in 5, brought to you by the Butterfly Palace. Have the best day ever adventuring through the rainforest at the Butterfly Palace. And Springfield Green County Park Board, reminding you to go play. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Forheads. Yep, it is Thursday. Good to be with you. Thank you for being with us. Uh, feels like fall outside. This might be our full, first full day of fall feel, or maybe yesterday was, I guess. Well, yesterday, rate. because the rain hung out all day, I actually felt uh, fall. Even though the temperature wasn't like cold per se, it felt very dreary to me. It did. And like, uh, there was fog last night. So yeah, it was fallish, no doubt. It might be here to stay too. Yeah. Watch out for that. Yeah. All right. We'll get a look at news. A Springfield man and his wife are the last two of five people total sentenced for a heroin trafficking ring. The husband, 40 year old Larry Hayward, will spend 20 years behind bars. His wife got 16. Authorities say the couple distributed heroin within the Springfield community for at least two years, getting it here from Chicago. The Country Mart in Forsyth, the grocery store there, uh, had to close down because of a fire. It apparently started with a straw hay bale outside the store, but the flames spread to inside the store. It took three fire departments to get that under control. Uh, for now, the drive through pharmacy is open, but the store itself uh, is closed right now, working to reopen. Hmm. Okay. Someone had uh, to have it, done that, right? Well, yeah, I mean, it doesn't just uh, ignite spontaneously. Uh, out with the old and with the new in Springfield, demolition work has begun on 100-year-old Reed Middle School. Uh, it will last, demolition will, for the next couple of months. And then the new school will uh, go in. It'll be a state-of-the-art facility paid for by taxpayers with the passage of that $220 million bond issue. Not all that 220 is going for this, but... The school opened in 1923. Uh, the new building will house the Reed Academy of Fine and Performing Arts and will be for students sixth through eighth grades. Yeah, I was thinking about that. It's too bad. Um, and I know money obviously is an issue and they want to be good stewards, but it's too bad that the 1923 building could not have been rehabbed for like a different use. And then Reed could have gone elsewhere like a new Reed, you know, because they were just talking about all the historic buildings, uh, some of them being demolished. You know, it's been uh, talked about at city council, like on Commercial Street. And I did not realize that Reed literally opened in 1923. Yeah. Exactly 100 years. That's just cool, you know? Yeah, well, you know, it costs money to retrofit those buildings and to yeah. change them. A it, lot of money, right, to yeah, rehab? It, and because they're not built like we use things now. They're, the, the rooms are small, typically, I'm assuming. Uh, but in not enough bathrooms, probably all those problems. Uh, but yeah, we don't, we don't keep buildings around unless they've got. Unless you go to his, Europe. Historical Or Ireland. We, we were walking in castles in Ireland that were, you know, thousands of years old. It's just wild. Yeah. Uh, the largest healthcare strike in the United States history is going on as we speak this morning. Workers say they need more help and better pay. Kaiser Permanente employees are on the picket line for the next two days or so, uh, with more than 75,000 workers taking part. Non-essential services are shut down, such as routine doctor visits, and uh, a lot of the, the positions that are on the strike lines are pharmacy techs, dental assistants, some nurses, things like that. Emergency services should be okay. Emergency services should be okay with replacement workers and staff reassignments. It affects about 13 million people in six states, but fortunately for us, not Missouri. Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Uh, all right, did you hear it? Surely you did yesterday. Everybody heard yeah. it, I guess, talking about yeah. the uh, nationwide test of the emergency alert system, EAS, uh, that went out to cell phones. FEMA and the FCC sent that out at 1.20 yesterday afternoon uh, to all cell phones, which is only the second time that it's specifically gone to your cell. Uh, of course, it was only a test. Used to say that, right, on the radio and TV. This is only a test. Just to make sure you got it in case of a real emergency. Yep, I got it. It yeah, went off at of work. Too. Everybody's phone went off at the same time. Yeah, and it's then, uh, uh, interesting that I don't remember it last year. Apparently, this is the second one. Last year? I don't year? remember that last year. 
it happened last year. I, I, well, maybe it wasn't two consecutive years. Maybe that's why I don't remember it. Yeah, I don't think it was last year. Oh. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Maybe you're on to something. Um, all right. Chiefs fans will love this. The 15 and the Mahomes Foundation. You you know, Patrick Mahomes. Um, I thought that was such a clever name when he first started it. Uh, they are providing $1.6 million to support America's Boys and Girls Clubs. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and his wife, Brittany, have a multi-year commitment to the Boys and Girls Clubs. Uh, the money will go to help those clubs and the cities that have specifically impacted their lives, the couple's lives. Uh, talking Kansas City, of course, Lubbock, Texas, Tyler, Texas, White House, Texas. Uh, so some smaller Texas towns. And uh, this is kind of fun just because it gives you something to watch for. The Mahomes Foundation will also donate $1,500 for every Mahomes touchdown. So cool. uh, pretty neat. And they're going to rename some of the Boys and Girls Clubs after him. So that's really neat. Good for him. That's cool. That's cool. He uh, is a Kansas City legend already. Arena football, meanwhile, uh, is getting real in Springfield. It's getting closer. The Ozarks Lunkers now have a new head coach for the very first year in the Arena League. Uh, Cam Bruffett was the head coach of Parkview High School, and now he's a, uh, a professional football head coach. The Lunkers will begin play on June 1st of next year, and, of course, they'll do so in that brand-new arena that's being completed as we speak uh, at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds. So that'll be completed soon, I think. And uh, and then they've got tryouts. Uh, later this month, there's tryouts for the Lunkers. So if you know somebody or are somebody who is pretty good at football, you may want to try out for some Arena League football and be a professional football player. That'd be weird. It would be so fun. It would be so fun. I played powder puff football. Surely there's got to be some similarities. It yeah, was they're pretty so, much the same. Pretty much the same thing. That's what I was thinking. Pretty much the same thing. Um, honestly, it was a good time. You had to hit some people? Hit some yeah. girls? Yeah. Okay. I could see that. <laughs> we didn't hit anybody. It was flag. <laughs> Stop. Uh, in Canada, this is crazy. Uh, two people were killed by a grizzly bear inside a national park. I'm not laughing about that. I'm laughing at you because it's you not said, funny, Sarah. I know you said not surprised about me hitting people, which is kind of ridiculous for you to say such a thing. And now I'm laughing and now you're going on to this terrible story. Sorry, sir. Go ahead. Why are you while laugh? This is myself. an awful story. It's it is actually a terrible story. I know it is. It's not at all funny. Uh, this grizzly bear attack happened in the popular uh, Banff National Park. As a wildlife team arrived at the scene, they found a very aggressive grizzly bear, which they uh, swiftly euthanized. So uh, I would say they're going to so. test and make sure that that was the bear that they think it was. But man, that's. Oh, wait. So they. Two people. Right. But they also didn't know for sure that it was the one. Well, I mean, they weren't there when it happened. Right. They got called wow. to the scene uh, hmm. out in the middle of, and it took them, they had the helicopter in. So they don't know. They didn't know. I mean, for sure. Right. Thing yes. Maybe covered in blood and they could, they'll figure it out pretty quick, but they didn't know at the, uh, at news time. Right. Uh, this is interesting. The highly uh, controversial COVID vaccination cards are actually going away. Uh, the government is no longer going to print them for a time during COVID. As you know, some places required that card to get into festivals or concerts and some bars and restaurants, uh, airplanes, but they are no more. The government says they are no longer printing them. So, um, all right. The Greater Ozarks Regional Mother's Milk Depot is now open in Springfield. It's located on West Grand near Kansas Expressway. The Mother's Milk Depot is a place for moms to donate breast milk, a.k.a. liquid gold. Uh, the depot promotes community health by expanding the safe use of human milk for all babies, especially preemies and uh, ill infants. Milk collected at the depot is shipped to the milk bank, a nonprofit organization based out of Indiana, uh, for safe processing pasteurization, and then distribution. What a great idea. I mean, that's, I think that's fantastic. There's so many kids who, who need that, and it's, it's so instrumental in their growth and health. 
Yeah. So that's great. Um, I am surprised that they pasteurize it. I think for legal reasons, they have to do that. You think? Person to person, so. you don't. But yeah. I mean, then you have to know right. the person's history and all of that. So, um, Yeah, cool. that's interesting. Okay. Okay. All right, folks. We're getting closer to it. Friday. Yeah, I hope you have a Tomorrow's great... Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, I know. It's exciting. Um, thanks that will for be exciting. In. Yep. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Be sure to share it with your friends. And... Uh, and have a great day. We'll see you back here bright and early tomorrow. All right. Bye.